All right, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We're on the back patio. We're handheld today. We're going to talk about the weekend, which I think is interesting, right? Just coming off of a dual event weekend where four of us did a powerlifting meet and a bodybuilding show. Bodybuilding show first, powerlifting meet next. The whole crew did the powerlifting meet. Danny was not around, but is around, obviously, constantly the content. Shout out. Yeah. Trayvon was behind the camera capturing everything like a fucking true gangster. Kyle, shout out Kyle was there, too, g- grabbing the stuff that Trey wasn't grabbing. And Cole was competing and the mad rapper. Yes, sir. So I think everybody has their point of view <laughs> of what was going on. But I want to start with Trey, yeah. the man of few words, but who captured and saw everything. And... You know, it was linked up with me the whole time on what we needed to be getting. And yeah. uh, just want to hear what your perspective was, Trey, of, like, just the whole situation. Um, so, I mean, it was a wild-ass weekend and a long weekend. It was a long weekend. So <laughs> There's a lot more car driving than I anticipated, like, than I thought oh, dude, when I first day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I guess where should we start at? Um, I guess it would be, um, I guess overall, like, I, I know, I don't think anybody, like, in our crew was surprised that we could do it. Right. Yeah, no. But like for what were you trying to make sure you grabbed, I guess, as the videographer that's shooting the main stuff for the uh, for the documentary? Like where where were you happy that you were in certain spots or um, I don't know. Just I was just trying to get like your overall perspective or was it just like a whirlwind, Trey? <laughs> it's a little bit of a whirlwind. <laughs> but um, man, I was just like I love like from the capturing like perspective, I love um being like in the just being like behind the scenes like with you guys though and like even just like the small conversations that you guys have before like you even take a lift or something like or like there's clips of Tyler Galbraith like slapping himself before fuck yeah you know what I mean like (laughs) I think like those kind of like small like behind the scenes clips like that or something that like ties it in together and like really kind of showcases like what we're actually really about Mm -hmm. that I don't think like many people get to see like I just think that when we finally put it all together and people can actually sit down and watch it, they're gonna they're gonna realize the peop the people that like watch the vlogs, look at the pictures, watch the content, everything like that every single day, they definitely have a vibe of it. Yeah. But I think that once people see this, they're gonna have a completely different one because they're gonna get to really see the weeds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well and I think Mike and Up changed everything too. Yeah. NFL film style because even that one video is a couple weeks ago. When Tyler said, "Be the guy, G," and I and I said under my breath, "I am the guy," like that's stuff you would never hear. Yeah. But you can hear, and so I haven't heard the mic, the the hot mic from the actual platform. But even just Cole rapping me up to taking the weights, like that's yeah. like an inside look that I don't know that lifting's really done. You know, no. I haven't never seen anything like that. No, not like that, no. And then with that level of intensity, right? So I think that that I'm yeah, excited like for inten- that. Like the intensity level, like I can't wait for people to see that because. We always talk about, like, at 4 4 a.m. crew, like, what sets us apart is the intensity level that people train at. Yeah. And so for people to, like, see that up close, hear the Feel di- it. hear the dialogue, everything like that, it's going to be just a total game changer. Yeah. Because at, when people watch the vlogs, really all they're seeing is motherfuckers lifting some heavy-ass weight. Yeah. You know? So, like, to kind of get, like, the inner details, I think, is going to be really, really fucking awesome. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think that... It's like um, – it was funny because DK's dad asked me uh, – he, he heard about the squad. He goes, I don't know how the fuck you do that. And I looked at him straight dead in his eye and I said, because I'm a fucking animal. Fuck yeah. <laughs> he goes – That's an epic that's answer. Truth, he, yeah. That's exactly what I said. Yeah. He goes, well, I love that answer. Because, yeah. I mean, that's the – because – but then if you can feel what that is, like the confidence, the self-talk, that you – back to what Peter said about violence and peace – I'm a pretty low key dude most of the time, but when it's time for that shit, I feel like a fucking killer because you have to be. And so I think a lot of people lose or maybe never had that switch. And I think we're going to be able to show that switch at the highest level. You know what I mean? So I mean, it's going to make, make people feel some type of way. I mean, like think about when you watch like Pumping Iron, yeah, and you see like Arnold and all of them just getting it, yeah, and it gives you like chills or some mm-hmm. shit like that. Yeah. Like that's the same exact way people are going to feel when they yeah. watch this. Yeah. Fucking and some it. of the best shit in Pumpkin Iron is whenever Arnold and those guys are having the conversation. Just hanging out. Exactly, of what yeah. they're saying. Yep. That's what makes it better than him going on stage and doing all that stuff. It's true. It's the shit leading up to it. Correct. But yeah, I, I could tell from my perspective, Trey was in the fucking zone. I know he was. This is going to be 
like you watching at home, you listening, this this documentary is going to be so much better than anything has been done because I agree the the amount of focus and intensity Trey had <laughs> recording. <laughs> yeah, I wish people could see that because he was fucking in it. Well, there wasn't one, and uh, kudos to Trey on this. There wasn't one time where I knew he was going to have to go out of his way to get the footage. He was so fucking in, meaning like we're driving somewhere. But he would drive an extra one or two lengths, meaning just to ride with yeah. me. Like, but he don't live like ten minutes away. He lives like forty minutes away. So it's like I would be like, "Oh, Trey, you don't have to go." He's like, "No, if I we ride together, then I go all the way back. Then I go home." It's like yeah. those little things, guys like me don't miss though. But that's what makes that extra level. That's the over delivery yeah. part. That's the going the extra mile. He did that this entire time. And I think it's going to become really good because you, you told me while you're recording is like you're like I'm already visualizing me editing. I already yep. know exactly how I want want it to look like. Yep. And it, and so. if you're shooting it that way, then that helps that, whenever you're editing. That's too. how it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, the other wild cards of you know who else will be in it is going to be really interesting too. Like I see in my head, and with Trey's vision of how he shot it, it's um it's it's exciting. And because I've got to put together things that were not as long as this but were seen by millions of people the squad every day thing was was seen by so many people the blueprint was seen by so many people like i've got to feel and execute and have a lot of people watch things but now it's like so organic authentic and real then to be able to put it together with you know a group of guys that need to be showcased more and and then also the people behind the camera that need to be showcased more. For like sure. it's it's exciting, and I and I think it's the right time. Yeah. I think Netflix is needs more fitness content. I think that they're they need content anyway. You know what I mean? So it's like I think this is the right time for all of it. Big time. It's fucking exciting. That's why like some of the asks I'm gonna make I don't think are unrealistic at all. You know what I mean? So shedding light there on was, it's gonna uh, be fun. There was some cadet to me who. Uh, like no one was around. He's. It was like one of the younger kids. He had to be probably like in high school or something like that. But he was competing, and he goes, "Is this really gonna be on Netflix?" And I just look <laughs> at him and go, "It's gonna be on HBO too." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I like that. Cole answer. fucking yeah. love it, bro. It yeah, it I mean, good. we all believe it's that good. So why the fuck not? Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, fuck. So good. We already do like everything. Everything that happened like this weekend or everything leading up to it, like it's shit that everybody in the forum crew already does. Yes, and I think all the time. And I think that's what's gonna make it like so special is we're just basically like putting it together so people can actually like witness it though. Yeah, but every but like it's all. But my point from like like authenticity like standpoint though, like it's all organic, it's all authentic because even if there's no cameras. It's already happening. Everyone anyway. would be doing what they're doing. What they're yeah. And it's doing. not like we were going out of our way to wake up at 4 a.m. or train at 4 a.m. This no. is literally exactly. what we're already doing. That's when it can get a chance to run the most because it is the most authentic. Yeah. And you're just capturing what is natural. Yeah. It just happens and to be. Yeah, and that's how it's been for years. So. Yeah. yeah. It's just like being able to showcase like what kind of outliers we really are is exciting for me. It's real exciting because I want to be able to showcase um, what else, you know, the other people that are around and what's going on. And, and I told this to Trey and um, to Cole before, like when Arnold and them was shooting Pumping Iron, the two guys, Charles and I forget the other dude's name, I'll have to look, I got the book inside, but it's like, they didn't know what they were, ca- like, they knew it was good. They just good. had the camera just Yeah, recording. they were just rolling and doing what they do anyway, to Trey's point, and then it became this great thing, and then they had that on their resume for the rest of their lives, you know what I mean? And that's the thing is like... I want to tell the story that I reached out to a couple people about doing a documentary, and then I said, why the fuck am I doing this for? We have all the capabilities fucking right here. Like, yeah. why am I Why am I waiting? My whole life I ain't waiting on no one else's approval. Why the fuck am I waiting now? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. It was, uh, it was vindicating, and I was so focused on Sunday. I wish I was maybe Big a time. little bit tighter on Saturday, but the reality was I wanted to look like yeah. my version of a 1970s bodybuilder and really, I really wanted that weight the next day. It was too big of a deal for yeah. me, um, you know, from my just whole career standpoint. So, yeah, let's break it down. Let's let, let's give the listeners at home a rundown, like a day yeah. by day of what was going on, <laughs> the breakdown of us going to Bob Evans and shit. Let's let's tell them all about it. <laughs> tell them all about it. Well, I think that, you know, for me, if I look at like, all right, there's obviously weight classes in powerlifting. 
and I was going to be in the 181 class. A lot of people don't realize that's a 24-hour weigh-in. So that's where the logistics of this whole thing was, you know, I have to weigh in the morning of the bodybuilding show, but not for the bodybuilding event, for the powerlifting meet. So the thing is, I honestly think I looked a little better, probably two or three pounds heavier. When I had to manipulate some stuff to make weight, it kind of made me feel a little bit softer, but I couldn't really worry about that because it's not just one event, it's two events. And so the other thing is, immediately after weighing in, I had to take in enough food that I could be tight enough on stage, but start the bloating process for the powerlifting so I could have a chance at the world record. Yeah. And so, yeah, so the day before, so we go to Friday. Bob, Friday, Friday. Yep. we go to Bob Evans because I need to buy the farmer's, what the hell is that breakfast? Farmer's, breakfast. Breakfast. farmer's choice. Farmer's Shout choice. Out Bob's. If you're Shout out Bob in, Evans. Robert. They're just down the road. Yeah, exactly. No so, they're probably listening. They yeah, they're probably listening. listening. <laughs> you guys could get a sponsorship. There's definitely some want. execs at Bob Evans who yeah. are, you know, loyal fans to the round. Thousand an episode. We'll take you guys now. And so it was like one of those. <laughs> 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 just saying. So anyway, I bought, so I went to Bob Evans to get the footage, but I couldn't eat the food till the following day. Yeah. And so, so I. Oh my gosh. So I, I ordered it all. I sat there and looked at it. Trey ate, Cole ate, and uh, who Kyle was, Kyle was yeah. with us. Yeah, Kyle ate. And then I asked them to box it up. That was fucking brutal. Yeah. But I knew, and, and then I got one serving of pancakes, but then I was like, I need another serving of pancakes. Yeah. So I had two servings of pancakes, the farmer's choice, all that shit, boxed it up, but I knew in the morning I was going to start hammering. So as soon yeah. as I got off the scale for powerlifting. Which, which... Uh, break this down because we don't live close to where we had a weigh in, right? No, it was an hour the logistics and a half. was an hour and a half to Dayton yeah. from Columbus. Basically. This is one of the things that, that I yeah, yes. this is one of the things I didn't really anticipate was okay, I know they're like remotely close, but like you have to go wake up in our bed in Columbus, drive to Dayton, what, hour and a half. Yeah. Drive to Akron for the bodybuilding show, which was closer to like three hours. Yep. So that's four and a half hours in the car. Then drive back to Columbus, two hours five six and a half hours in the car then trey had to drive back home because he came because he this is one of the moves that he did he didn't just have me meet him you know what i mean he he drove out to be be with the whole thing and then kyle stayed at his house still so we <laughs> made sure kyle's alarm was going off the right yeah. time shout it's this shout out kyle <laughs> all right so basically six and a half hours in the car fucking seven for trey you know all of that event go to sleep then wake up again and then fucking drive another hour and a half to Dayton to compete in powerlifting. By the way, when you sit in a car for seven hours, it's not real good for your hips for lifting, everybody. Then compete, come back another hour and a half. So we're legitly in the car 10 hours. 10 hours over the weekend. That's a fucking lot. That's like driving to fucking North Carolina or some shit. And so that right there was, I think, uh, I underestimated that a little bit. It didn't affect me a ton because I went from 180 pounds and I went to bed at 198 pounds. The fuck yeah. Bravo. Woke up Bravo. at 195 pounds. <laughs> and let me give you the rundown. Now, please. Yes. anybody that rode with me. Give us the laundry list. Which is these two guys and Cam. Cam. Saw me smash an astronomical amount of food on yes. the way to the bodybuilding show. So I ate all the pancakes, all the hash browns. Um, I didn't eat the eggs because they were cold. I didn't get a chance to warm them up or whatever. And then I ate, you know how you get like a thing of Kit Kats? That's like a whole sleeve. <laughs> I didn't eat just like a Kit Kat. I ate the whole sleeve. Then you know how you get like Reese cups, not like the double, but there's eight of them in a package, eight doubles. I ate all those. And then uh, I had Twizzlers. And then when I, and then I had, and, um, he, and he was eating all this candy too fast that I couldn't even get my camera out. He couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he was literally just smashing in, it. it. Literally <laughs> open, smash, <laughs> open it, smash. Yeah, no, no bites. You, like, no bites. Whole thing this or mouth. what? No, no not really. <laughs> Yeah, Rolls. I was just fucking eating, dude. That's amazing. And then um, I got something else. Was it Wendy's? We got Wendy's. Yeah, we got yeah, Wendy's. Yeah, yeah. So I ate Wendy's at lunch. And then um, on the way you home. You had a donut before you got on the stage. I had a donut. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, about yeah that. I had a donut. Nice. Where would the donut come from? Yeah. They just had donuts at the show. For after the show. <laughs> For after the show. But I just oh, ate one anyway. Hey, <laughs> let me get one. <laughs> I already knew I wasn't going to win the bodybuilding show. So I was like, all right, I'm, I, I've already like task completed. Now it's yeah. just time to eat. Um, and then, like, uh, when we got – did we get fast food on the way home, too? No, we didn't. Not on the no, way home. No, no, not on the way home. No. Okay, and then when I got home, Rachel had ordered defleece pizza, which is the deep dish, like, Pizza Hut-style pizza. What? And I had, like, uh, two or three things of uh, chicken noodle soup. And then I had um, 
So I had chicken noodle soup and pizza, and I like I'm a bloated fucking train wreck. Fuck yeah! I get on the scale and it says 198 pounds. <laughs> Were you excited? That, yes, because yeah. I knew I'd wake up at 195 that's and I would squat feeling. a world record. And that's what fucking happened. That's what happened. Yeah. And that's then the amazing. morning of, I drank more chicken noodle soup. I drank a whole bo- uh, bottle of uh, pickle juice during so the meal. You're like the Michelin man at this point. Yeah. Do you know what was key though? And Ramos has always told me this. After you bring your water on, make sure you get a little bit of a pump. That was probably the hardest thing was making myself lunge that day because I lunged 400 both days. And so, but I'll tell you this, it made all that water, I don't know, like it just felt better. Like so my, my legs were all fucking blown up and I think it helped me a lot. Mm. Um, now Isn't that w- it wild that how much better you feel when you do lunge? Like even yes. if it's just a small amount compared to just not doing it yeah, at all. It just keeps everything active. Yeah. I was really surprised that my hips felt as good as they did riding in the car that much. And I knew when I got to the meet and I put my briefs on, it was a fucking wrap. Everything was tight. The I went on the back room, one, two, three, four, five plates, singles, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> um, everything looked like an absolute fucking smoke show. Signature. Cole gave me a, like a three-quarters wrap for 600. It looked like a fucking yeah. speed rep, and I knew it was a fucking wrap. So... It was. It, it felt. It felt good. But that people cannot grasp the the weight gain. That that I was yeah. talking yeah. about it yesterday. We're, we're like, doing an article Ma- on that. Ma- oh, Mika- yeah. Michaela like just calls it the bloat. Yeah, she says <laughs> Cole is participating in what he calls it, the bloat. Unquote, the bloat. Yeah, <laughs> people cannot believe that we're trying to gain that yeah. much weight on purpose. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> well, why don't Why don't you explain why real quick? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so when you're depleted, especially for a bodybuilding show, you're super. You're drier. And so the, the, the muscle doesn't have as much water in the tissue, so it's not going to be as explosive. Your joints feel dry. You don't have enough, uh, like, you know, uh, saturation in the mm-hmm. muscle around the joint. And the body only knows weight. So meaning that when you're 180 and your waist is super small, it's just like a pyramid, right? If the pyramid base is, is small, it's not going to be as fucking sturdy. Mm-hmm. Well, as your waist gets wider... Your joints and your muscles get more saturated. Everything's more is just a stronger tissue. It can be more explosive, and so you literally feel like a different person for 24 hours. Yeah. Now I don't care what I look like. If I wake up and I look older and my fucking my eyes are bloated, like fucking I have the bags, are, I know I've done it right. <laughs> I literally look like a fucking train wreck when I wake up. But I I could tell when I woke up and saw that 195, I could have put my entire life savings on the line that I would have fucking squat that weight. I knew it as soon as I woke up. I could feel it in my hips, everything. So that was exciting because at the end of the day, and Brian Peter said this to me, he goes, well, yeah, I mean, the whole fucking documentary is kind of key that you squat that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. No, no, true. no pressure, G. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's no way in hell, like, I was going to let that not happen. And I think my training up to it, I was super confident that You're I was so actually, dialed in. Yeah, I was super dialed. Yeah. It's the most dialed I've been in a long yeah. time. Every, like everybody knew it was gonna happen. Everyone knew it was yeah. gonna happen. No one was surprised. I don't think. Do you feel yeah. like your whole yeah. like powerlifting career has kind of led to this point? Yeah, yeah. I feel I like mean, I that's finally what it got, looks like. I feel like I finally got a chance to validate um, the kind of real lifter that I am because I think that a lot of people will kind of question that about me for some reason. I don't know why, but. It's maybe because I don't look like the rest of those dudes, or maybe because mm-hmm. I had these other parts. I think part of it's the business, honestly. Big time. Yeah. A lot of it. It is looks the like big... you actually enjoy it. Yeah, and I think it's. I think it's just the. I think, it, but I think it's the business clouds a lot of that. Yeah. That I'm like not a real fucking real lifter. lifter. I'm the yeah. opposite of what most people think. Like I care about that more than I care about fucking anything, basically. Yeah. Well, and so, like, I think I got a chance to showcase. And what told me was, there's West Side dudes that aren't really on social media that I don't talk to very often that all chirped at me and were like, get your bench and deadlift together, Gene, you got a monster total. Like they know it was legit. Right. Uh And then a couple of them like hit me back. Like, yo, I didn't even realize it was all time. Like, fuck yeah. You know? So when I see stuff like that, um, these are guys that don't go out of their way. I trained with in the past have no, they don't even have to reach out. Mm -hmm. So there's like, I, I definitely, that, that to me validated some stuff, you know, and Ramos told me, he's like, He's like, you just stay healthy for the next two years. You're going to see crazy numbers. See, powerlifters a lot of times mature later in life sometimes. And because I always was going up and down so much because of bodybuilding too and the fitness shit, I didn't just go straight through. Yep. <clears throat> now I'm more of a powerlifter than I've ever been a bodybuilder. I realized that I don't really like bodybuilding anymore. 
I want to look like I can do a bodybuilding show, but I probably don't really care to do a bodybuilding show. <laughs> I honestly, Dustin said something is to me. Is that because Cam beat you? Well, that doesn't help. <laughs> shout but out Cam. Shout dude. out Cam. I'm proud shout of Cam. Cam. Yeah. <laughs> that's still a little bit of, that's a subjective <laughs> yeah. thing right there. But Soft. Yeah, but the reality yeah. is, sore, though. Sore butt. Yeah, yeah, sore, yeah, butt. Sore, yeah. I'm sore butt. I gotta be, I'm never going to hear Because, you know, when AG would ask me questions, he would make sure Cam would approve it. Yeah, it's and so then high now I got. Yeah, yeah, now I, I'm, yeah. I'm never gonna let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew as soon as that Yo, happened, 20, I was like, twenty geez. like twenty years from now, I'm still. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I, got, I I can never live that down. Yeah, can we talk about the bottom moon show real quick? Sure. Can you good. give a breakdown to, you know, talk about how everyone else did. Talk about mm-hmm. Tyler Galbraith looking like a fucking unit on stage. Oh yeah, Tyler Galbraith, which I already knew. We all knew this. Yeah. He looked like a freak show, like weeks out. I figured he was gonna win it. You know, in Matheny got second to him. Matheny does just a bodybuilding show and gets a little tighter. He's going to be really hard to beat because he's so symmetrical. Yeah. And so he, and he honestly looked unreal on stage. Yeah. He looked unreal. And he looks like a true 1970s yeah, bodybuilder because his does. arms are so fucking big, too. He looks like fucking Hercules. Yeah. Like, he looks like Hercules. <laughs> and, and he deadlifted 617 the next day. <laughs> Yeah, I after, mean, I mean, yeah, it's after, just, after squatting after, 580, yeah. and his after, style a of show. after a bodybuilding, after a bodybuilding show, I mean, yeah. So I think Tyler winning it, and then you know, a lot of this being based around me, Matheny hasn't been talked about enough, or Cam, Cam being a high schooler to ride like that, fucking amazing. Cam got the state record and uh, yeah, he got the state, deadlift, right? Yeah, so so oh, he did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so shit. Cam snags a record and beats me in bodybuilding, fucker. And then the rest of us go elite in powerlifting the next day. Me. Zach and Tyler all get elite totals. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> you know what real. I mean? It's a, But I knew that's what was going to happen because when you put something on the, the calendar like that, it raises everybody up, right? And so everyone knew. What I like, too, is like not only were they doing it for themselves, but they were doing it for the team because we, we had something to prove because we knew there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on this. And so, like, I, I felt that with everybody, and that, that that's like I fucking love that. They're like, yeah, fuck off, you know, fuck these guys, man. We're gonna show them how we what we really do, and that's exactly what we did. I, I'm not surprised at the outcome at all. Like, I knew that's exactly what was gonna happen. So I'm just glad I didn't miss the fucking weight and tank the whole fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it was good. The bodybuilding show was was solid. You know, it wasn't a very big show, but honestly, we all got to get a chance to be on stage together, which I think it made even better. It was just, it was just a cool thing to do. Yeah, yeah dude. You know. And I was clowning up there a little bit. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Dustin said he might want to do a show when he's fifty. I mean, that might be the only time I'd ever get back up there. I think I'm a straight power lifter from now on. It just ain't <laughs> yeah. my vibe no more. <laughs> yeah. I think I want to live life a little bit too, <laughs> too much nowadays. I mean, this week's definitely been it. <laughs> Danny, a little outside, inside, outside. What are you, what are you thinking, or what, what kind of were you, you know, yeah, yeah. intrigued by over the well, whole weekend? Yeah, my responsibilities over the past year have changed a little bit because I would have definitely loved to actually come out. Yeah, of uh, course. I mean, you just had a kid, dude. Yeah, but uh, no shade, Danny. You're good. <laughs> well, uh, going throwing it back to Trey real quick. I mean, you and Kyle have a fucking pile of stuff to go through, right? So like. I'm just curious as far as, like, the creative direction. Obviously, you don't have all the answers right now um, as far as the, the whole direction. But, like, where do you guys anticipate starting? Or, like, what are you most excited to dive into? Hmm. I know it's kind of a loaded question, but. It is. Um, I think creating the trailer is going to be gangster, Trey. You know, I was That might think- be where we start. No, yeah. Right, because yeah, I mean, that the, might give yeah, us a vibe. Just a that's te- what I was. Teaser. That's what I was like thinking too. Actually, I had like a random thought the other night. I was like, I think the trailer for this is gonna be fucking live, bro. It's going to be fucking epic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like a when movie people, trailer. <laughs> like when people see like a thirty seconds, so like minute and a half trailer of this. Yeah, they're gonna be like. Yo, I have to fucking watch, watch this. Hundred percent. <laughs> I agree. No question. Yeah, no. it's gonna be like a thirty for thirty. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now it's just like essentially organizing everything, getting getting the foundation of what we want set up. So sure. then that when we uh, – I think a big factor will be also like when, once we do get some of those interviews and stuff like that is uh, kind of figuring out how we're going to – Where they fit. Where, yeah. they, where they fit in it, yeah. Yep. Because I think fitting everything around those is going to be yep. a big, big key obviously. You know what I mean? It's so a little like, bit challenging. Yeah. So – yeah, I mean, kind of like waiting for that too as well, but just building like the foundation right now. I mean, there's I was going through some of the content yesterday and there's 
just some fire. Just, there's just so, yeah, there's some fire. Yeah, there's just like so much to though at the same time yeah. that like it's like a little overwhelming for sure. So yeah, that's why I've just been it's like finding chill. the starting point. <laughs> yeah, I've been yeah. kind of just uh, same as Corey, just been like kind of chilling this week. Like yeah, I'm just gonna chill, hit it. You know, well come think back, about come back like to what's it. a real like even baseline outline of even how you even start. Yeah. That, well, because is be, it a huge documentary or is it like a multi-step thing I, where there's like I six episodes? A, I think it's gonna be a couple hours. Don't you think, Trey? Yeah, it's gonna be pretty long. Yeah, and yeah. then I don't hopefully, know how long, but I hope it's a uh, like an hour and a half to two hours. But then there's an opportunity for episodic uh, other stuff. I think you got which do I that, think yeah. I think there 100 percent will be like opportunity for the episodic stuff because. Especially, dude, I think, like, once people really see, like, what we're doing on yeah. a daily basis, like, they're going to want more. more. I agree. And to, to, to come back to, yeah, to come back to what we do, like, we do, th- we, we already do this shit. Anyway. We're already recording it. Yeah. So, like. Why not? Just so, you know I mean? There's, like, like, that's something we could easily do. For oh, sure. Dude. <laughs> and the quality. Yeah. For sure. All right. We need to take a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back. All right, you know this episode is brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. We are here for the middle commercial yes. part of this uh, episode. Cole Susak, we call you the graphic gangster. Yes. You do a lot of design and creative direction for yeah. the brand, basically all of it. Uh, so what's going on with this amazing hat, the zaddy hat? Yeah. Danny's got the zaddy hat. We got the... Uh, pink shorts we got the blue shorts like talk talk to us about the process yeah, so of course you know max for muscle we supply all the crazy pumps all the recovery everything like that but i think what gets slept on is the lifestyle agreed portion. with how much time Facts. and effort we put into making sure our outfits outside the gym look fresh yes it needs to be talking about more. It's lifestyle so you know you know from this uh the shorts to the swag zaddies, Zaddy. everything like that I just think people need to, you know, they get need to get more some more swag in their life. I think they need more swag, and we always make sure that you could wear it multiple times. See, I think that's slept on yes. a lot too, Cole. When you get free gear from most companies, no matter what company it is, it usually shrinks up. You can never wear it again. However, that is not what happens here no. at Max Effort Muscle. I want to make sure, think about this. I know this is a podcast where you learn shit too. I want you to wear it a bunch. <laughs> yeah. So why would I spend no money on a fucking shirt that you're never going to wear again? Facts. No, no, no. I'm spending the right amount of money so you will wear it often. Yes. And, and Cole's making sure it's gangster yes, so you trying, feel good. And trying to find the quality materials to where you can roll up the sleeves on Flex Friday. Yes. And then wash it and then wear it again the next day, you yep. know, while you're out at the pub drinking, you know, yeah, beers yeah, and stuff us. like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. That's the lifestyle. Yeah. And that's what we do at Max for Muscle. Well, yeah. And look, you know that we have one of the most elite fucking sexy pretty models on yep. our staff here. Named Trayvon Deer. <laughs> now Trayvon, <Sexy> motherfucker. <laughs> Trayvon has been in multiple campaigns, like actual campaigns, Literally. not the ones we create. And so to get him to model this gear, especially a vintage expert like himself, yes, is a very big deal. So Trey, you can weigh in on that because you. Where'd were, you, you model, were, Trey? Where'd you model? Was it Playgirl or something? <laughs> 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 yeah. So these. Hey. So. These, <laughs> So <laughs> take it from the top. Yeah. <laughs> these these shorts, these shorts, these shorts will have the honeys at you. Yeah. Yes. And see, I was wear I was wearing these walking down the shore north the other day. Yeah. I had about twenty Cat honeys. Call. Wa- uh, yeah. At about twenty <laughs> honeys walk up to me. There it yeah. is. They yeah. all come. They all commented on the shorts. Yeah. That's see, what it is. And see, I wanna, I wanna find the best <laughs> quality stuff, the best Jeez. everything like that. And and I'm going to the best experts. And I'm just so grateful that I have a partner in Trayvon Dier, who's yes. a vintage expert, knows everything about clothing. So you know, everything here is Trayvon Dier approved. Yes. Shout out Trayvon. Yeah. Shout out Max from Muscle. Yeah. Oh, hold on one quick. Danny. Is okay. The most okay. Sick. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We gotta go. Danny's, you know, uh, attire is very simplistic. But very effective. <laughs> yeah. And Danny is always wearing max effort. So, Danny. I am? Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, you have to size down. But <laughs> yeah. hey, Danny, 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 real quick. Uh, shine some spotlight on how the shirts uh, make your biceps look way bigger. Yes. Please talk yeah. about that. Shockingly enough, this is a this is a, this is a large T-shirt. Oh, okay. Shockingly yeah. enough, yeah. <laughs> but so I'm not following my own advice right now to size down, but definitely recommend so you can choke that bicep nice and snug. 
But the shorts are nice too because they actually fit your legs yeah. from all those lunges that you're doing. And yeah. not to mention the swag zaddies. The Daddy. swag zaddies with a Z. Love. Yes. yes. So you know, <laughs> named by Danny. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Was it though? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the fact that anything has daddy in it. Oh, that definitely came from me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yes. Daddy concept. <laughs> All right, back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right, we're back. Roundtable podcast uh, for our second half. Uh, usually this is yeah. Danny's segment. Yeah. But, I mean, we need to probably talk. Danny, you could start it, though. Anything else about the weekend? About the weekend? Yeah. I don't know. I was going to ask you a question, though. Go yeah. ahead, dude. Yeah. I was gonna say, for, this is for all three of you. What is what is one thing that people don't know about you? Oh, jeez, um, man, one thing that people don't know about me. I've been doing content for a long time, trying to think. Yeah, I know that's why I asked this yeah. question. <laughs> Cole, I mean, uh, two things pop into my mind. Doesn't um, have to be training or anything. Yeah, yeah, like no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I need to shine more light on that. I used to be a fucking gamer before gaming was cool. There you go. I was playing with the dudes in phase before they were in phase. That's one thing I kind of wish, you know, lifting and working out and football and stuff like that. If I would have just stuck with gaming, yeah, I could Never be living know. a different life right now. Yeah, I don't know. maybe. Um, that and then also I'm a self-taught drummer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know yeah. that. So I, I yeah. So how, this is how I got back. Got how I got into gaming was whenever Rock Band and Guitar Hero came out. I was go. a fucking nerd. I was a nerd about that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like level expert, like super fucking good at it. Okay. And I originally made YouTube videos for Rock Band, and then I loved playing the drums. So I like basically convinced my parents to buy me a fucking legit drum set. Yeah. Had them out of my garage. And I was just listening to everything by ear. I could play everything by ear. So I didn't have to, like, read any sheets or learn how to do anything. It was all natural to me. It's like drumline. Yeah, exactly. But then, exactly like what drum it line. It's exactly but, what it was. <laughs> yeah, and that probably lasted for, like, I, mean, I want to say, like, two years. And then no my, shit. Yeah, my parents had to sell the drum set because the neighbor said it was too fucking loud. How many drum so. sets did you break? Uh, drum sets. Or just um, any set a drum set. Zero. A lot of drumsticks, though. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm still pretty sick at it. Yeah. Hey, that was a lot of stuff I didn't know. Yeah, that's pretty good. Trayvon, what you got? Um, hmm. I was trying to think of something wild, but like just to go off Cole, like super similar to Cole too. Like I feel like me and Cole did the same exact thing growing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because because I played video games too growing up a shit ton, and me and Cole were both in Call of Duty clans. Different different clans, but we were both yeah. in Call of Duty clans, both making YouTube videos. I guess to just to go off the YouTube video, like yeah. I had multiple different YouTube video pages, so you probably can still find them. So if you really wanna, if you really, yeah. if you're out there and you really wanna find them, but I had one YouTube channel specifically that this was when I was in like elementary school, where people do this now, but I should have kept with it. Yeah, is I opened Pokemon cards. Oh, uh, like unboxing shit. Unbox. Yeah, I used to like unbox like shit like when I was in like middle school and yeah. stuff like that. I was on I was on YouTube in 2007. Oh, My wow. oldest account was in 2007. That's I was good. super early too. I was on like literally second or third grade. Cool. Did you, and when you were little, did you ever watch any of those YouTube videos where it's like the where is Lego where is Legos doing stop motion? Oh, the, the everything, I used to make every, those. Everything I used was to stop, make those. I, yeah, I tried to do it with uh, fucking WB action figures. I tried to make stop motion videos of that because that yeah. was a huge thing. That too. was huge, dude. I yeah. did stop motion Lego videos. So like if. If you don't know what it is, you're like, what the fuck right now? But if you know what it is, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's super OG. <laughs> it's literally... OG as fuck. Yeah, everyone was trying to make, like, animation shit, yeah, yeah. but they were, that was moving, like anima- they were just taking pictures. That was animation before, before, like, animation was a thing. Yeah, yeah, before <laughs> yeah. you could easily do it in, like, yeah. After Effects and stuff like that. I but got yeah. one. I got one for you guys. All right. In second grade, I was a bowling champion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, my grandma was, like, in the, like, local bowling, like, Hall of Fame. Like, she was, like, in this, like, she was, like, a good bowler for, like, basically her whole life. All the way till she was, like, 80, she bowled in the league. So, like, in the country, in the valley, there's really no shit, there ain't shit to do. <clears throat> so every Saturday morning, I would go to the local, you know, bowling thing or whatever, and I used to go to tournaments when I was, like, fucking young, like, probably second through, like, fifth grade. So I, and I won... One of the fucking tournaments. I don't know how much if I was a champion of fucking five miles or what the fuck it was, but I re- I can't even remember what I bowled, but I remember being heavy in it. It was so long ago. It's when they used to smoke in the fucking bowling yeah, alleys, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. you would go. I would go bowling with my grandma and come back and smell worse than I'd fucking smoke a cigar. Yeah. And uh, but I remember I was like into it. I don't know 
if I like went with the brace, like if I, I didn't oh, spin the ball, I wasn't like that. Yeah, yeah. But I would just try to fucking throw it as hard as I could and try to just explode the fucking pins. So Great shooter. Fu- fun yeah. fact about bowling: the first time I ever went bowling, it was a preschool or kindergarten field trip. I bowled a strike. Very there first, you go. Very first. So, Walk yeah. off. I'm a, I'm a big I'm a big bowler guy. Yeah, too. I think bowling's <laughs> really. I'm a big bowler. I'm a big, <laughs> big bowling guy. I don't I have think, my own ball or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. you. you well, I go enough. You have the shoes. So on. I wanted my own ball. Okay. So I was at that level, <laughs> and I remember my grandma was like, she had like an extra bowling case, and I was like, yeah. all right, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I get my own ball one day. I'm putting it in this case. That's amazing. <laughs> you probably wanted the six pound ball too. Didn't yeah. You? Oh, dude, I had to use the eight pounder, and I would just, just fucking, fucking shot putting it down the. T- <laughs> sling that motherfucker. Yeah. So yeah, and I remember thinking the guys at the bowling alley were so cool. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like that guy, the guy that walks down and clears the balls. Like that's a great job. Yeah. Like I remember, like I mean, I had no, you know, you're fucking. I'm like Andon's age. It's amazing. So anyway. Guys what, what's that. one thing they don't, they don't know about you, small arms? Uh, to, well, that one brought up one that I was thinking. That's of. a pretty good I, one. I, I literally yeah. forgot about this, but I was a free throw champion at my. It was like a, a church thing, and I reached like the fifth round of this thing. But <laughs> yeah, I was, it was so random. I just was like stroking from the free throw line. Of course you were. Yeah, it was wet, super <laughs> wet. I don't know. Danny's a free throw champion. That nice. and then we we're in, really into Halo, like in like seventh and eighth grade. You know, yeah. back before. Xbox Live was really coming on the scene. You know, we were doing system, system link at my friend's house, like nice. between the two rooms, yeah. and just, you know, talking shit to See, each other between the rooms is the f- most fun I've ever had. Dude, whenever, up. like, the whole scandal about how Grand Theft Auto was ruining kids' brains and shit, I literally wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if it wasn't for fucking video games. Yeah. Like, straight up, wouldn't even be close to being the as The mixture of video like games that. and WWE. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, <laughs> it's... Yeah. That's fucking... Dude, so we got two gamers, a free throw champion, and a bowling champion. <laughs> yeah, this is a fucking podcast. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, small arm says. <laughs> small arm says. So good. Bringing the value. Uh, there, yeah, tons yeah. of value. Um, <laughs> all right, we got anything else? Um, yeah. Well, Where do you go from here? Where do you? Yeah, let's, yeah. let's hold on. No, all right, like, let's the powerlifting. Yeah, let's go back to the powerlifting. Okay. Team. Let's talk sure. about. Um, maybe my question is. What was everyone's favorite moment from the weekend? Ooh. And it might be like obviously, and I I kind of want to say not the seven hundred squat for you. Yeah, yeah, like something else besides so, that. Um, um, I would say uh, I'll tell you the most. Um, I really on the bench. So here's the thing about the weekend powerlifting wise for me. You know, I've never reached an elite total in powerlifting gear. So I've done a bunch of geared meets, right? So that was really like I thought I was so dialed. <clears throat> so last time we went to that meet, I never texted anybody. I just turned my phone off. So Rachel said like, I didn't even know you were there. Like, let me know. So I this time I listened because it's Mother's Day too. Yep. I text my mom. I text Rachel. I'll see you guys in like five hours. Like I'm just I'm I'm dialed. I turn my phone on airplane mode. Straight chess game. And I knew I was going to have to have a straight chess game to get to the elite total. I needed 1542, and I got 1543. On the bench, I've got RIP Mike Wolf or Wolf on my shirt. And I, I literally said to myself, like, I need the 341. I need a 340, 350 to make these numbers. And I literally told myself, like, hey, Mike, I need you on this one, buddy. Like, I need to make this because people were having a hard time keeping their hips on the bench. The shirt felt good, but I was feeling the weekend a little bit. And that was probably one of my favorite like moments to myself um, other than the squat. I, I knew I had the squat in the bag uh, as soon as I put my briefs on. I just needed to go do it. But I also had to make sure I didn't rush the rep because it coasted a little. Just It coasted this much on me, but it felt like this much because of in the moment, right? It's funny because on the first 600 squat, I was squatting down. I was looking over top of everyone's head. But Cam and his mom were standing at the end. And so <laughs> so I, I looked at Cam. He didn't know I was looking at him. But I was like, you, I'm hearing whoever's counting for me. And I'm looking at Cam. And then I realized like I was focused. But I can't be. I, I need to be like at another level right, for the next yeah, two yeah. lifts. And, and I think another thing was my second lift beat my other RPS record. 
but I didn't make a big deal out of it because it wasn't even the the point. Yeah. But I would say like my bench press because of Mike passing away was probably the most important to me. That's tight. Yeah. Trayvon. Um. Hmm. Okay. One clip that comes. So just something that comes to mind. Something yeah. I recorded actually. Is, okay. This is funny, but not so serious. But um, Cam was at the vending machine. Yeah, he mentioned I, that on I Instagram. Saw, I saw yeah. this. I saw this. Yeah, what is this? Cam was at the vending machine, and I asked him if he would get me something. And he <laughs> said, yeah, I'll get you something. And so he couldn't get his card to work, though. And so before you know it, he has a line behind him of about four <laughs> people. And you can see the social anxiety set in on his face. Because his card won't work. Because his card won't work. And standing just one person behind him in line is Larry Pacifico. <laughs> And so Larry's like, yo, like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, get the fuck out of the way. I'm trying to get the vending machine. <laughs> and yeah. so Larry's tell, trying to help him get his car to work. <laughs> Tells him to just do one thing is turn it upside down and it happens to work. And it was just a very, very funny clip because you could, like, you could literally see the, like, the social anxiety. Out of all the shit he did the whole weekend, that's the thing he was the most nervous about. You could, you could just see it, like, set in on his face and, like, oh, shit, like, my card's not working. I have a line behind me now. And one of them is the best power lifter of all time. <laughs> yeah, and, he's, yeah. and he's just like staring at him from behind, like basically looking at him like, yo, look what the fuck's taking so long. <laughs> that's pretty yeah. funny. That's what he means. So that's good. We, that has to make the documentary somehow, Trey, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's funny. I got. I, I, I would say I have a few things. I Go ahead, few Cole. Because my perspective of the entire meet was a lot different. I'm like trying to help everyone out, make sure everything's which going was right, amazing, by the which way. Which was cool Cole. for squats and everything. Cause yeah. That's what mostly everyone was really focusing on was what their squat was. Yeah. And I want to give a big shout out to Big Mike. Yeah. Big Mike, yeah, Big Mike was in. Dude, he was having a fucking blast. It was awesome to help him wrapping his knees, making sure he was doing good. It was fucking awesome to see. Big, I'm I'm super proud of Big Mike. For a lot of people that don't know Mike Fraunfelder, he's been at the gym since he was eight years old. Yeah, he's had a lot of challenges, and for him to be able to do the powerlifting meet was huge. And for him to be a part of it, it's hard for Mike just to get to the gym. Yeah, because some I mean, he's had experimental brain surgery. He's had a lot of stuff he's had to battle, and like he's in it. He looked no, at he me. He goes, it. he goes. I don't even care what my OCD does. I took fucking pre workout. <laughs> like he was like yeah. fucking. He yeah. was in it, dude. Yeah, he was having a great fucking. Yeah, time. he already signed up for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I was super proud of Big Mike. And and because because uh, he rode with me. Uh, like me and Tyler and Zach Jake, all the yeah. way in, so we spent like a lot of time together. It was a fucking great time. Yeah, he fits yeah. so good. It's it. It was just <laughs> unbelievable. Because there was like one time I think it was on bench. They they called his bench or they might have called his squat. He goes, I don't give a fuck. I ain't taking the same way. He goes, I'm going that. Going <laughs> <Yeah. my> <laughs> <laughs> no, he embodies it for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, but that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like Mike's in there with his own battles. Trying to make, you know, he's not even close to the strength of the guys, but it doesn't fucking matter. See, that's what people don't realize is that everyone has their own story and have has their own fucking battles, and that it's like it's all relative. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I I'm I'm rooting for that guy, and it's yeah. uh, it was it was exci I was excited to see. And him there. especially with Big Mike, whenever we did the Tennessee meet, he drove six hours, didn't tell anyone, just showed up to Tennessee. That was awesome. It was fucking awesome. And then waited for all the re uh, the rewards and yeah. shit too. Remember, it was a, it was a, a twelve-hour-long meet, and he stayed the entire time. Didn't care. We had no clue he was going. Yeah, we had he no just idea. showed up. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. No, I, I I'm I'm proud of him for that. So that was cool. Uh, my next uh, big shout out is to Brian Peters. Yeah. So Peters had not me, small. Peters yeah. also had me wrap his knees, and on the second attempt, I think because I I was super setting wrapping knees. I think I went from someone to straight to Peters. So whenever I was wrapping Peter's knees, I must have like just been too in it, and his leg, like I couldn't tell where his bottom of his knee was. I get done wrapping his knees, and he stands up. He goes, it's not covering my knee. And I'm like, well, fuck it. It doesn't matter. You're going to smoke it anyway. <laughs> and, and he just looks at me. He shakes his head. And then he goes and squats that <laughs> He goes and squats the weight. So everything's fine, right? Yeah. So now the next one, he wanted uh, – I forget what he finished at. It was, it was a good – 570, I think. Five, something, something like that. that, yeah. He was, he was battling in between two numbers. I was like, Peters, what the fuck – like, what are you going to do? Like, why not why, – why would you not go for it? You're like, yeah. you're going to fucking smoke it. Yeah. So then the next, like, 10 minutes of Peters just waiting, I could see, like, in his, in his mind, he was really thinking about it. Yeah. Like, he was, like, super fucking dialed in. And then whenever it was time, like, he was, like, three out or something like that, I'm like, Peters, it's time. 
He goes, fuck yeah. And then he sits down, and I just start fucking, we start yelling at each other. Like, ah! <laughs> and then he fucking like wrapped his knees. He smoked and shit. It was it was a great sequence. He told me again today when we were golfing just now that that was like his squat surprised him the most, in that um, just being in competition again. You know, you could see Peters lock in probably like he did on the NFL field. You know, what sure. I mean? and he, that and that was it. and that was cool to see. Yeah. And the transition for those guys is really difficult. So I feel like him being able to bridge a gap by being in another locker room, which is the four a.m being at practice time, being at where the, the lights are on. I, th- I think it's well, been dude, really good Well, dude, talking to him the other day, I mean, he it just did the powerlifting meet. He's doing the Memorial the Ruck. Day Ruck. And then he's talking about doing some free diving shit in Hawaii this summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Free he's diving. You don't, you don't have a scuba shit. You have, you're, yeah. you're holding your breath. So, yeah. like, he's, 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 like, searching for that next thing. And he can hit a fucking golf ball because I just witnessed it. The dude's a stud. Yeah. I mean, well, he's, he's, fucking out. he's the guy that would go up on the mound. He would throw, like, 90 well, on accident. That's yeah, what he I'm did sure. in high school. <laughs> he he was throwing like high eighties just because he's a fucking yeah, fucking freak. I like uh, Brian gives good perspective because he's around a lot of high level performers. Yeah, and the fact that Brian stuck around as long as he has, and he even told me like as he's figuring out what the next level of his life is, it's going to be hard for him to leave Ohio because he feels you know the way he feels by being involved with what we do, mm-hmm. and uh, so Brian's helped definitely give an outside perspective to how great I think that things really are that are happening. That feels very normal to us, Mm -hmm. but he knows it's abnormal. I mean, he's talking about, I'm going to go down and help Christian McCaffrey and, you know, JJ Watt. And he's, I mean, he's like dealing with some high level guys. Sure. So that, I think that I'm the last person that needs validation, but at the end of the day, having Brian around just shows that Brian's sticking around for a reason. He lives and breathes it. Yeah. He lives and breathes it. He gets the, do hard things and be around high level performers and he he knows it's a ride you know it's it's a real crew so that that definitely helps it, i t- i've told him like three or four times i'm so glad he went to go experience it especially that meet yeah because that meet it was right a great there meet. unbelievable every with everyone that was involved and everything like that <laughs> except for it's hard for us that many of us to compete it is it is jake Embry really is. helped a lot too he, he did if, yeah. if it wasn't for him my forms was still <laughs> yeah. Big I time. mean, he wrapped Brian Callahan 700. I, yeah. Honestly, if I think about a part to the weekend, Brian Callahan went to last meet with us and made 636 and missed 606 on his opener. The motherfucker went and squatted 700 easy. He he could have squatted easy. Seven, fucking dog. He could have got 700 raw, drug free, and a guy that weighs like 230 is absurd. Yeah, he's a a really so legit, <laughs> so legit, bro, and yeah. easy. But it goes to show all the band. He was beating me on some of the days on the fucking band tension. Like he is fucking strong, and I think to show case that we could achieve as a group, one of our lifters, and I know multiple will. But I looked at the board today. It's six hundred squat and deadlift minimum, one eighty one, one ninety eight, two twenty, two forty two. And then 165 is 551 and 578 BK and fucking Tyler Olds. Yeah. It's like, yeah. come on, man. So, but I wrote that 700 extra big because that is fucking impressive. And honestly, Brian, if he stays in it, might have a chance he, squatting. Better. Big time. <laughs> big time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Which is crazy to think about, but he's got that ability. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so that really meant a lot too because that's. That's a big win. And you see the thing you put in the group chat? He had it on a post-it note on his fucking computer at work. I fucking love that. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. And his wife even says, she goes, all the mornings are worth it, huh? Fuck and yeah. So, yeah. You know what I mean? That's something like as a, you know, he's a D3 football player mm-hmm. to be able to continue competing and then do something like that. And I've had to reel him in. He was like a PO, basically. I'd <laughs> sign him to a squad-only contract. Yep. You know? <laughs> Yeah. When we moved the gym, I said, dude, you got to make it on Wednesdays because that's where you value, you know, that's where we value, you push the group. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He's coming a lot more now, but it's like, I wanted to keep, I knew he had some pop, but man, 700 that is. is shit. <laughs> yeah. It's and impressive. Last, last but not least is, uh, myself becoming an unofficial official world record rapper. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the entire <laughs> sequence of just rapping, W-R. Of, of rapping the knees. <laughs> From my perspective, it was the most fucking like my adrenaline was through the roof. It was fun as fuck. I there's got to be some great raw footage of whenever for the last squat, like last squat, yeah. I'm wrapping your knees as hard as I fucking possibly can. You're like, I need more. Like I'm give like, it give to me, me all the heat, Cole. Give it to give me. Give me all the fucking heat. Yeah, 
And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. After I got done rapping that, I was like fucking about to pass out. I was so fucking. <laughs> and then like you had to gassed. call me. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> so somebody asked me if you were nervous about that. But um, I, I didn't. I didn't feel that you were nervous at all. No, honestly, like, I, like even from like with Mike tapping me and stuff like yeah. that, he. He was like tapping me before I was going to call you, like yeah, to, yeah. F- to the one and everything like that. So no, like I like, f- and honestly, that was the first time I've ever counted you down. Too. I know. So no, I just fucking fucking ball game. Yeah, just fucking <laughs> in it, dude. It's what we do. It was normal. Fuck you know? yeah. So so good. I fucking love it. Uh, Trey, anything else? No. Danny, well shit. Congrats, bro. Hey, thank yeah, you. Yeah, appreciate I mean, it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a powerlifter or anything like that, but I feel like it's just inspiring to watch because everyone has their own. Yep. Thing or lane that they're doing, they they can draw inspiration from, it, and that's why I think the documentary is gonna fucking kill it. I just uh, really am excited when they update the numbers to see myself as an a- in an actual number one spot. Mm-hmm. That for me is a really big deal. So people can chirp all they want. I don't give two don't fucks. Fuck matter. No, <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, like seeing myself there from the first time I squatted seven hundred in two thousand eleven. And one of the things that um, Louis Simmons said, it's about longevity, bro. Like, I've been doing this for a long time and at that level of strength, and I've dipped in and out of it. But to be even at that level for over a decade is a long time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm real proud of that. And then to be able to do it at the lightest weight class is fucking cool. So, all right, we're sick. Uh, Great episode, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speedin, the graphic gangster himself. Cole Susak, brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. We are out. Peace.